Hi, everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. Always a pleasure coming your way as we continue with our discussion for the IC in November 2021 examination. And we are looking at IAS 33 and in special, one of the basic accounting standards that you need to understand if you're writing your corporate reporting examination or your financial reporting exams. And I see some of you guys joining, you are welcome. Uh, in case you missed the part one, uh, that is yesterday's session, you can check the description of this video and you will be able to uh, get access to the part one and watch it so that the build up will make sense for you in the part two. Now, I see you guys joining, you are welcome. Give us a thumbs up on the video. When you join, it helps us a lot to promote the channel. Most importantly, uh in the comment section in the chat box let me know any questions you have for me uh put them in the comment section put them in the chat as i bring on my screen real quick and uh as we continue with our discussion for ias 33 earnings per share ias 33 earnings per share now so yesterday we started with a discussion on earnings per share and we made mention of the fact that when it comes to earnings per share, it is uh, one of the basic standards that we need to look out for. And the examiner could smile on us in the exam hall about this particular standard. We discussed the issue about the importance of the earnings per share. We spent some time to look at the limitations of the earnings per share uh, as an indicator to assess the performance of organizations and management. And then we made mention of the fact that when it comes to the earnings per share, we have the basic earnings per share and then the diluted earnings per share in that case. And we started our discussion with the issue at full market price. And we saw how the earnings per share is going to be computed under the issue at full market price. Then we came to the bonus issue. And most importantly, what tribe there is that we mentioned that with the bonus issue, we're gonna be uh, calculating the bonus fraction. And that bonus fraction is gonna be applying to shares outstanding prior to the right issues. And any share after the right issue, the bonus fraction is not gonna affect that in that case. So that is the issue about that. And now we want to look at the final aspect of the basic uh, earnings per share, and that is going to be right issue. That is where we want to take our discussion uh, of today. In that case, I see some comments coming in. Leonard said, good evening, Shira. Good evening, Leonard. Jeremy G. Ross said, good evening, sir. Good evening, Jeremy. Cornelius Ohine Malfo said, good evening, sir. Good evening, Cornelius. Then Leonard said, I can't wait to dive deeper. Yep, that's awesome. Thanks for joining us, you guys. Give us a thumbs up on the video. Please share the video. Let us reach as many students as possible watching the live stream and watching the playback in that case. So let's go into right issue and let's see how we deal with that. Let's go into right issue and let's see how we deal with that. So when it comes to right issues, right issues is simply the issue of new shares to existing shareholders at a price usually lower than the market share price, right? So yesterday I told you that when it comes to the bonus issue, it's like a free shares we are giving to the owners of the business. So instead of giving them dividends, instead of giving them uh, some money for what they have done or some money for whatever it is relating to the operations of the entity, we give them shares in that case. But a right issue, so unlike a uh, bonus issue where, no money is paid by the shareholder as such. It's not a source of revenue or funding to the government. Right issue, there is some money coming in for the business and shareholders are going to be making some payments at the end of the day. So right issues, we say that it refers to the issue of new shares, issue of shares to existing shareholders issue of shares to existing shareholders at a price below the current market shares or at a price below the market, uh, the market price in the proportion of current ownership. in the proportion of current ownership. 
So just that the right issue, sorry, bonus issue, I mean, right issue to you get it based on the ownership that you currently have in the business in that particular case. So, but the key thing here is that it is issue to existing shareholders. Key thing here is that Shareholders who pay something at the end of the day. Shareholders are definitely going to pay something at the end of the day. So then the question we ask ourselves is, when there is right issue, what do we do? Right issue, like I told you yesterday, it's uh, going to result into a bonus fraction. Why? Because if the current share price is, say, $2, and the right issue, we will let the shareholders pay, like say 1.5. So meaning that they are paying 1.5 for a share value at two at the end of the day. So it means that they are getting some free shares bonus. Do you get the idea? So some free issue of shares situation coming in there that we have to really pay attention to and be mindful of in that case. For that reason, that bonus element results into a bonus fraction that we would have to calculate. So under the right issue, we say that the bonus fraction is going to be equal to the cum rights price divided by the x right price. Now, the cum rights price is just like the current share price, period. And the issue about, the, about these two is that the cum rights price will always be given to you. Okay? This is always given in the question because the share price just before the right issue will always be given to us. But then the theoretical x right price to be calculated. You need to calculate that yourself. You need to calculate that yourself. So that is how we compute the bonus fraction under right issue. That's how we compute the bonus fraction under right issue. And like we mentioned yesterday in, um, how do we call it? The bonus issue, the bonus fraction, it's also going to be applying will apply or affect only shares outstanding prior to the right issue. Only shares outstanding prior to the right issue. So that is the idea about how we arrive at that very uh, point on that. So keyword, bonus fraction affects shares outstanding prior to the right issue. Now the question we then ask ourselves is Inshira, how do we calculate the X right price? How do we calculate that? Then once we calculate that, we can now calculate what? The weighted average number of equity shares in that case. So let me pull up an illustration then we're going to use the illustration to find out how to calculate the earnings per share when there is right issue, and then we apply it in that particular case. So example. Machine Limited had an issue hundred thousand one dollar hundred thousand shares and made a right issue of and made a right issue of three, four, 
five on first August twenty twenty. At four point two zero dollars per share. The share price at the date of the issue was. Six point five zero dollars per share required. Calculate the earnings per share of Mitchin Limited. If the profit of the tax is $10 million for the year ended 31st December 2020. So this is the question we have. We have to see how we're going to solve it generally in that case. So Michi Limited had an issue, $1, 100,000 shares. So meaning that um, the shares are going to, the outstanding shares is that. Then they made a right issue of one, sorry, three, four, five. Meaning we give you three new shares for any five you are already having. So let's set out our solution slide for Mitchin Limited. For Mitchin Limited. So the first thing we ask ourselves is the period, the outstanding shares, and then uh, to bring in the ideas in that case. So if you look at the period, So we look at a period, look at our standing shares. We can look at the months in that case. So since the year ended is 31st December, that means the year start was 1st June. So from 1st June 2020, the entity had an issue 100,000 shares. Now, note that the right issue was made on 1st August. So, July, so that is 30th June to 31st July 2020. So, how long will that be? So, seven months, I guess. So, seven months. Right? Because January, February, March, April, May, June, July. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The August is first August. So August will not be included. Now, from first August 2020 to 31st December 2020, we're going to be having the outstanding shares plus the shares in the right issue. So let's get a number of shares in the right issue. We are told it is three for five. So it will be three over five times 100,000. Does it make sense? Three over five times 100,000. Because we give you three for every five that you already have. So three over five times 100,000. Uh, but, 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 but 20, that should be 60,000 shares. I don't know. Yep, I think so. That should be 60,000 shares. Hey, Siri, what is three over five by 100? Yeah, so 60,000. 
All right. So now that we see that in the right issue, 60,000 is going to come up with, then from there, we're going to have 160,000 shares. So that 160,000 shares has been there for five months. Do you get the idea? Now, if you check it at the end of the year, the total number of shares that will report on the face of the statement of financial position is going to be the 160,000. Does it make sense? But the question is, Will all the 160,000 shares qualify for earnings? No, it will not qualify at the end of the day. So what do we do then? What do we do then? So we need to calculate the bonus fraction since it is a right issue so that the bonus fraction applies to the shares outstanding prior to the right issue. So the bonus fraction is going to be here. So let's see how we calculate the bonus fraction. Let's see how we calculate the bonus fraction. If you remember, we said the bonus fraction when there is a right issue should be the cum right price, which will always be given to you, divided by the X right price. The cum right price, and then the X right price. Now, if you go back to the question, we are told that at the date of the issue, the share price is what? 6.5. That is our cum right price. So that's $6.5. But the X right price, we have to calculate it. So how do we compute this? So we will bring shares here. We'll bring the value here. Now, currently, if you have five shares, it is valued at 6.5. So let's look at this together. Five times 6.5, getting 32.5. All right, then under the right issue, you get three more at the value for each right is 4.20. So we multiply that up three by 4.2. We're getting 12.6. So the value is going to be 8 here and then 45 here, if I'm right. Thirty-two point five plus 12.5. That's 45. So that our X right price is going to be the $45 divided by 8. So 45 divided by 8 is going to be 5.6. Could be 5.625, something like that. Could cap it up to 5.6. So that is how we calculate the X right price. Now, the idea about the X right price computation is that uh, it is actually the theoretical price. You know, the assumption on the right issue is that when you make a right issue, um, what's going to happen is that the share price falls. So we do this calculation as a theoretical X right price. So you see that now we assume that the price is what? 5.6, even though the original share price is 6.50. So we call this also the theoretic, theoretical X right price, the theoretical X right price. So if we look at it, 
divided by 5.6, assuming I'm using that, or maybe we could use whatever, everything that is there and not cap it, 5.625. So that is how we get our bonus fraction. That's how we get our bonus fraction. Any questions so far? Now I see some of you guys joining, you are welcome. This is part two of our discussion on earnings per share. Give us a thumbs up on the video if you're getting some values already. And also make sure you share the video, let us reach as many students as possible. Put in the comment section in the chat, any questions you have for me, uh, let me hear from you. I'm gonna be reading all your comments here on the live stream as we continue with our discussion. So now that we have the bonus fraction, now don't add it or divide it to get the answer. The reason is that if you do that, you will end up doing a lot of uh, approximations. So you want to avoid this. So we will go to the schedule to calculate the weights now. So we have our period coming in. We have our period coming in. We have our standing shares. We'll have a bonus fraction. We'll have a timing ratio. Then we'll have the average coming up. So if we check this up, like we said already, 1st January 2022, 31st July 2020, we're having 100,000 shares. We apply our bonus fraction, which we just calculated, 6.50 over divided by 5.625. Our timing ratio is seven months. So that's seven over 12. We're going to multiply to get the average. Then from 1st August 2020 to 31st December 2020, we now have 160 shares, 160,000 shares. Remember, there is no bonus fraction here because the bonus fraction affects shares prior to the right issue. So let's multiply up and then let's get our answer coming in. So, So I'm getting 64,407, something like that. You can confirm that for me uh, in that case. If we multiply up, I don't have my Casio here. So I'm actually trying to do some illegal punching here, but I'm going to get the answers. So you can confirm the answers for me also. You see? What is 160,000 times seven, five over 12? The answer is about 1 million, 1 million Okay, so let's get that coming up. Ouch. So that's 66, 668, something like that. So we add it up. Someone should confirm the first value for me. 
I don't know. So that we can get our wings coming in to be 66, 668 plus 64, 407. I'm getting 131, 075. 131, 075. So, like we say, we say all the time. Uh, even though there are 160 shares, not all of the shares qualify for earnings, okay? So that now we have our wins, our basic earnings per share will be equal to the profit for the year, which was given in the question by Michin, as they have made $10 million dollars. Divided by the weighted average number of equity shares, 131075 shares. So we divide to get our answer in that case. To get our answer in that case. So Stan Obi said, good evening, sir. Good evening, Stan. Uh, Olusin M. Kalon said, thanks, sir, for your endless effort. Always a pleasure. Edu Jomo said, good evening, family. Good evening, Edu. Sharifa Ben Poma said, hi, Shira. I've missed you. Hey, Sharifa, I missed you too. I hope you're doing well. Archery Bonsu said, uh, good evening, boss. Good evening, Archery. Uh, Kamis Suleiman Juma said, Thanks so much for your fruitless, for your fruitful, okay, lecture, okay. Then Intelele said, uh, what, 67, oh, okay, so it's rather 67,404, all right. 407. So then let's re-add to get our wings coming up. Maybe I just asked Siri for that, but maybe I got a lot of answers coming in. So that should be 134 and 75. So we're gonna bring that up. One, three, four, and 75 shares. So let's now punch this out to get our earnings per share. 10 million. Divided by one, three, four, zero, seven, five. And I'm getting $74. And uh, 60 cents, something like that. So 74.60 in that case, 74.60 in that case. So that is the issue about earnings per share if we are dealing with the right issues. Now you realize that in the questions we've solved so far, like everything is independent. Now, sometimes in a question, there could be a bonus issue, then there could be right issue. Are you getting it? If in a question we have both the bonus issue and right issue, it's very important we find out which one comes first. However, in that case, we have to calculate two bonus issues, one for the, sorry, two bonus fractions, one for the bonus fraction relating to the bonus issue, then the other for the right issue. And then you must know where, how to apply it as well in that case. So that is, that is basically how we calculate our basic earnings per share if we are dealing with the right issue. That's how we calculate the basic earnings per share if you are dealing with the right issue. Samad Gate said, hello, sir. Samad from India. Pony, how are you? Hope you are doing well. Yes, Samad, I'm doing well, and I hope you are also doing well. I think it's been a while since you joined the live stream or you join us. I hope that you're doing well. 
Any questions for me on the right issues? Any questions for me on the right issues? So in putting everything into perspective, what we are saying generally is that under the basic earnings per share, there could be issue at full market price. All we are saying here is that there could be a bonus issue and there could be also right issue. In the cases of bonus issue and right issue, you must always remember to compute the bonus fraction and that the bonus fraction affects shares outstanding prior to the right issue, prior to the right issues. Daniel, Michelle, what Chiaba, forgive me if I don't mention your name, but let me stay with the first two. Daniel, Michelle said, uh, thank you for those presentation. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So that's it about the basic and special. Very sweet, simple, straight to the point. Very, very sweet, simple, straight to the point. So let's move on to the next thing, and that is going to be um, the diluted and in special. The diluted and in special. The concept of diluted and in special is like a hypothetical and in special in that case. Now, the diluted earnings per share simply tries to show the effect of setting future transactions on the earnings of the entity. Okay, so it shows the effect on the EPS some future transactions. Now, when we say some future transactions here, there are two of them that we will be looking at. The first one is when there is convertible loan notes. And the second one is when we have a share option. When we have a share option. Leonard Montari is saying, if there is a bonus issue and a right issue, can the right issue affect the bonus issue or vice versa? Yes, we have to calculate the bonus fraction. So whichever happened first will be affected by the other's bonus fraction it's because the bonus fraction applies on shares outstanding at the date that we are doing either the bonus issue or we are doing the um, right issue. So two things generally that are going to be happening is convertible loan notes. Now, convertible loan notes, you know this already, is going to be accounted for in accordance with IFRS 9. And then the uh, share option will be accounted for in accordance with IFRS to share-based payments. Now, we are not doing these standards here. All we are doing is to look at the share options or the effects of this on the earnings per share of the company. So when there is a convertible loan note, how does that affect the earnings per share of the company? Yeah, you can. How does that affect the earnings per share of the company? Now, you must know this. With convertible loan notes, it is where the holders of the bond, okay, it is where the bond holders have the option to convert the bond into shares in the future. Okay, bond holders have the right 
to convert their debt into shares on redemption. On redemption. So that is the idea about the convertible loan note. It gives the bondholders the right, okay, not the obligation, but the rights to convert their shares in the future. Now, the question is, will they convert? Are, are they converting? No. But then diluted earnings per share simply means that we will assume right now at the reporting date that the entities earnings per share or the, the bondholders are converting their bonds. So if they are converting their bonds, what is going to happen? What will be happening here is that number one, it means any interest payable on the bond will no longer be paid. So no interest is going to be paid on the bond. Are you getting it? Because we are assuming that these people have converted their shares. Have they converted? No. So that is why we said the diluted earnings per share is a hypothetical computation. Why? Because we are assuming that today, right now, they've converted. So they are part of shareholders technically. For that reason, the entity does not pay the interest expenses on the bond any longer. When this happens, it means that we have to adjust the profit. So we need to adjust the profit after tax for the period under consideration. And we'll come to that in a moment. Now, because of this, that means that the outstanding shares will increase. The outstanding shares will increase. So what are we saying? What we're saying here is that Convert in convertible loan notes, our profit of the tax figure must be adjusted. Then our outstanding shares will be increased. Please note that when it comes to uh, convertible loan notes, we don't do timing ratio. So there will not be anything like oh, what, how many months has it? Because we assume that at the end of the year, they have converted. For that reason, we will just go straight and do our computations. In that case, that is the idea about convertible loan notes. So under that premise, let's see how we adjust our part. Adjustment of profit of the tax. So we're going to bring the profit for the year as given in the question. All right. Then, remember, we will no longer pay the interest. So the interest on loan notes, usually the annual interest, okay, on the loan notes. But then remember, interest is tax deductible. So if we are no longer paying this interest and we are adding it to our profit, then we have to less the tax effects of the interest. So then we will bring the tax benefit that we're going to be losing on the interest. And that is going to be the interest payable times the tax rate. Okay? The interest payable times the tax rate. So we will not get that benefit any longer, so it will be deducted. Then we'll get the interest net of tax. Now we now add that to the original profit figure given to us, and that is what gives us the adjusted profit. That's how, and that's what we will use in the calculation of our diluted earnings per share. So again, what are we saying? Under convertible loan notes, we are assuming that the people are converting their shares today. We want to tell shareholders that, hey, listen, probably this year you're happy from this question we just solved you are getting earnings of 74.6. You're happy. That's good for you. But then we have issued some convertible loan notes, by the way, and it is going to be converted sometime in the future. Uh, uh, will they convert? We don't know. But we want to tell shareholders that, hey, listen, probably you're happy today. You're getting 74.6. But wait, when the bondholders convert their bonds uh, into shares, 
that means the shares will go up. If the shares go up, then this your earning 74.6 is likely to take a nosedive to maybe whatever, 50 cents or maybe to 40 cents, uh, $40, depending on whatever conversion policy that the entity has at the end of the day. So that is what we're trying to tell shareholders when we are calculating this diluted earnings per share. So that's how we adjust our profit. Once we adjust the profit, the next thing we need to find out is, okay, how then do we calculate a weighted average number of equity shares? The weighted average number of equity shares simply is going to be calculated as the outstanding shares, the outstanding shares, okay, plus the number of shares in the convertible loan notes. Number of shares in the convertible loan notes. Number of shares in the convertible loan notes. So, like I said, we are not going to be doing anything, timing ratio, da 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 da. Now nah, we just go straight, adjust our profit, get our answer coming in in that case. So, that's how we deal with convertible loan notes. That's how we deal with convertible loan notes. Let's look at a final part. Then we see a question. Share options. Share options. Now, share options are a form of incentive given to employees of an organization that gives them the right, not the obligation, to buy some shares in the company upon the fulfillment of certain conditions. And share option is well accounted for under IFRS 2 share-based payments. That's not what we are looking at. We are just looking at a share component coming in in that particular case when it comes to dealing with the accounting of this. When it comes to dealing with the accounting of this. So with this one, it means that again, employees will be buying shares. So we are telling now, it's, it's actually like a golden rule. So the company will say, hey, if you're going to work with us for the next five years and you stay and work for the next five years, then you can buy shares in our company. So will all the employees stay for the next five years? Probably no. Can they all have the money to buy their shares? Probably no. But we want to tell shareholders that, hey, listen, you are happy making some earnings right now, but wait, when these people convert their shares, it will going to affect you at the end of the day. So number one, share options has no effect on the profit, right? For that reason, we don't adjust the profit like we adjust in the convertible loan notes. So share options has no, op has no effect. on the profit on the profit and hence not adjusted so we don't adjust the profit however we need to calculate the wins We need to calculate the wins. So the question we then ask ourselves is, how do we calculate the weighted average number of equity shares when there is a share option? We go through, through a three-stage approach to calculate the wins under this. So step, step one. Step one is we're going to calculate the percentage of dilution the percentage of dilution now the percentage of dilution simply means that you see 
the time that they will be buying their shares, probably the share price will be, say, $100. But when their contract is given to them or that incentive thing is set, maybe they will say that the grants are the grants, and which is the grant date, the share price should be uh, or is $20. So you realize that even though the share price is 100, they are going to pay only what's 20. So they are getting some amount of bonus coming in there in that case. And that is what helps us to calculate the percentage of dilution. So we say that the percentage of dilution equals the share price minus the exercise price divided by the share price. Now my space on the right is exhausted, but okay, I can do something times 100 because we need to multiply that by 100 and get the answer in percentage. Now the exercise price is simply the price that they will pay for the shares, to buy the shares. Okay, the price that they will pay to buy the shares. Then once you calculate the percentage of dilution, you go to step two, and that is to calculate the number of shares in the options. Number of shares in the option. Now, the way you calculate the number of shares in the option is simply going to be your percentage of dilution from step one multiplied by the share option. The percentage of dilution in step one multiplied by the share option. Then step three, you can calculate the wins now, which is the final thing. And your wins here will be any outstanding shares we have plus the number of shares in the option. The number of shares in the option. So that is a three-step approach we use for calculation of the weighted average number of equity shares when we have a share option. So you realize that in the calculation of wins under the diluted and in spare share, there are no timing ratios. Do you get the idea? Uh, and then the convertible loan notes, we adjust the profit, but then the share option, there is no adjustment of profit that is required or that is made in that case. And that is what you need to understand about that. Any questions for me? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, so Montari said, thanks, sir. All right, you're welcome. Any questions for me real quick? Okay. So if there are no questions, then I'm going to conclude around here today. And uh, God willing, tomorrow we will continue with uh, the discussion and then still touch on some other things uh, uh, relating to the standards. Possibly I will solve a question, maybe a full question tomorrow that has the diluted and in spare share effect in it. Then we will see how the pieces add up together about any spare share. Then I will talk about some other issues in financial reporting and corporate reporting related in that case. So that is all. And I'm going to conclude around here today. And thanks for joining me on the live stream. It's always a pleasure coming your way. Remember to follow me on Instagram at Inshira Premium because the meeting details or discussion will be posted on Instagram so that if it relates to a topic you have an issue with or something that you want me to share my thought on, then you can join us on the live stream in that case. So thanks very much. And I'll catch you same time tomorrow.
as we continue with our discussion. Now, in case you've not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, click on the bell notification icon. That way, when I go live, you'll be the first person to be notified by YouTube so that you can uh, get access and join me on the live stream. I'll catch you same time tomorrow.